My name is Mike B. Today's day is Muse is going. April 12th, 2019. Ooh, I forgot to turn that shit off. Sprockety, son of a bitch. Good test though. Thank you so much, sir. <sighs> Today's date is April 12th, 2019. My name is Mike B. We're gonna go ahead and start from here. Yes, it sounds good. Uh, first off, whoever sent me, I got a pro I got a thing in the mail today. I got this. Somebody sent me this. I don't know who did because there wasn't uh, there wasn't anything in the actual uh uh, uh in the uh, uh the package, but I want to show it to you guys. Twenty four one oh five f stop one point four. I oh, was sorry f stop four one point four twenty four one oh five. Give you a break. I'll show you. Oh oh yeah. Oh you guys are gonna love this. This is super good. We're doing this on the news. I want everybody to see this. This is fucking beautiful. You guys are gonna fucking love this. There we go. Unboxing. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. See, look. You take this. You take this. Pop the cap off. You put your coffee inside. And you drink. There it is. So thank you, whoever. I appreciate it. I'll drink out of it later. First up. First up on the news. PewDiePie. PewDiePie is uh, switching from YouTube Live to... <laughs> it's actually a pretty good cup. I actually probably will use it because I like it. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, it's switching from YouTube Live to a new service called DLive. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is pretty interesting because we've had plenty of streaming platforms that have come and gone or just kind of overstay their welcome <laughs> because they have a massive company backing them. So they're not necessarily going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, so this new one is taking a slightly different approach to everything. Now, uh, I'm going to play a video in the background here, right here. That is basically the front page. Uh, I just took this earlier today. Uh, this is the front page of, uh, of, okay, you're going to play. There we go. Uh, of the, uh, of the site. You could see, I'm going to kind of go through, I, as I go through, I'm actually going to be going through and I'm playing this with this young lady because this is seriously was the front page of the site when I went, all right? I just started filming and it was just like, bam. Uh, so I decided to leave it on here for a minute because I was kind of curious if she was going to whip out her titties because it says right here that you have show X-rated uh, uh, um, content, but I couldn't find any. So while it says you have X-rated content, I didn't actually see any. Really weird. Uh, this is a global earthquake feed. Uh, and then this next one is an empty chair. So, uh, <laughs> this is all this video I took earlier today. And I want to say that even though this snapshot is not probably the most, uh, um, if you say you click cash out on Monday, hold on, Friday, hold on. Sure there's support. Actually, I'm gonna mute it. What you're looking at here on this guy's stream is he is talking about PewDiePie streaming on DLive while watching a video of somebody else comment on PewDiePie streaming on DLive. This it's, and I'm watching this by the way, all on DLive. It's quite, it's quite the, uh, it, the unique, like there's so many, there's so many layers on this one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what DLive is while, uh, earlier today, me, uh, goes through and scrolls through some of this stuff. <clears throat> so first off, in about a day's time, because there is still, um, oh yeah, let me go back. What did she say? I just clicked away right away. Worthwhile for them to hold. Hold on. So that makes no sense to say that. What's going on the line? It's what you have on the inside. Yeah, I was done with that. Uh, <laughs> so while a lot of these streaming services try to like buy their way into uh, getting people uh, getting these big streamers to switch over and everything. Um, this is, I mean, most of the time they're like mid to high level streamers, whatever, like content creators are like, you know, mid, mid, mid sized content creators. Uh, and you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, PewDiePie, PewDiePie is, is very much like next level in terms of popularity. Uh, and yes, it's because of the fucking memes, but, uh, still this, like he's, he is going to hit a hundred million subscribers, which is absolutely absurd. So his influence level is just insane. And for him to 
choose or not choose, but you know, be you know brought over to a, a stream on, on a site like this. This is a lot of money they're putting into this project. Has to be. Um, but he's gonna have his first official stream starting on, uh, I believe, on Saturday. I think Saturday night, as a matter of fact, maybe Sunday. So you can uh, go through and watch that if you want. I don't know if the content is gonna be any different to whatever. Uh, as you can see, there are a number of people streaming on the platform. That was just chatting, just the chatting uh, uh, section. And then Apex, I decided to go and watch Apex for a second, just kind of see what the quality was. The quality was just okay. Um, I don't know if it, but I don't know if this was the quality of the person that was actually uh, streaming or if this is the 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 the, uh, the quality that the service uh, provides. Um, there's a lot going on on the right hand side of this page. Oh, because he has his uh, thing up. Okay, uh, but the way that they are, I guess, what makes them different is that they are offering a cryptocurrency style of bits. You can see in the upper right corner there, it says that there are a number of, there's like, what, 298, 278, 222. Uh, you can see right here, it says how much money people have earned. If you look at this number right here, 2 million, uh, 2.8 million uh, uh, Lino um, equals, what was it? What was it? 30 something thousand, 30, 30, 33 thousands. It basically boils down to like one point something uh, cents per bit, right? Um, <laughs> what? No, stop it. What are you talking about? Uh, oh, you can watch Night of the Living Dead, 1968 horror movie on here if you want. Has this person gotten any money? Nope, no money for this person so far. I guess nobody really appreciates old horror flicks. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be the new home for, for PewDiePie and potentially a lot of other people who are gonna, you know, be like, oh, well, the, now, now I know about this service. I'm gonna go ahead and go use it. Uh, the, the cryptocurrency part of it is a little weird, right? Now, I'm not gonna pretend to fully understand exactly how they are uh, supporting this, but I will read a couple things that I, that uh, that uh, other folks have uh, um, have chimed in about. So what I'm hearing, Pew is ditching out before he loses to T Series. <laughs> I don't know if losing to T Series when you have 100 million subscribers is really a loss. I don't know if that's the case. So Patrick, to what you're saying there, uh, on that note, I did do a lot of digging because I wanted to see if. If this was sketchy, right? Um, and so here's a here's a comment from literally username some dude on Reddit. I'm just gonna read it out to you guys. He says, the reason this seems like a scheme is because Lino point points are currently worthless. Just like Bitcoin, Lino is only worth if something only has value if people are buying it. People compare them to bits, but bits stay at the same price. There's an unlimited supply and Twitch isn't incentivizing people to lock bits like DLive. That's another way that they basically, I guess, maintain the value and stop people from basically churning uh, 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 Lino constantly is they, they ask you to, to lock it in. And then by locking it in, you can actually get a return on your investment by locking it in. It's really, it sounds sketchy, but the way this guy words it, it's kind of like, okay, maybe. Maybe, but we'll keep going. Uh, he says, um, on DLive, I'll go pull so you can see it. Uh, 60, 91% goes to the streamer, 9% goes to the people who have locked their Lino. Uh, locked their Lino. Uh, the reason they want people to lock Lino is so that there's just a little less supply and hopefully more demand, so the price of Lino can slowly rise. From what I can see, DLive won't take a cut of anything you give to the streamer, and it's an adless platform, so how do they make money? They hold a fuck ton of Lino. This is why people think it's a scam. There have been countless exit schemes in the crypto space. All they need to do is take the cash people have given them in exchange for Lino points, sell all the Lino they currently have, and dip. Now Lino is worth jack shit and the platform falls apart. When crypto was at its peak, this shit was happening almost weekly. We know this was happening weekly because probably, you know, at least a fraction of your favorite streamers would like talk about some new cryptocurrency that was starting up or whatever. Like, remember we were seeing all that shit in 2018? Everybody had a cryptocurrency. It was a fucking joke. Everybody had a crypto had their own cryptocurrency, uh, and and so this is this is one of those things that like we've people have gotten pretty good at, I guess, setting up a cryptocurrency scam and then dipping out. Um, but we should also point out that even in their own terms of service, dug this up for you guys. Even in their own terms of service here. Uh, let's see, let's go to page seven. Let me see. Hold on a second. Let me, I got my notes. All right. Yeah. So seven. Oh, I was looking right at it. Actually, uh, it might be kind of hard to read, but I'll read it for you guys. It says seven D 
Uh, no conversion cons uh, consumptive purposes only. You acknowledge that it is not possible to use the services to convert Lino points to any other value. The Lino points are solely for use in connection with the services and there is no opportunity for profits. You may not transfer outside to anyone outside of the site. They may not be sold or otherwise converted to any other value. They're basically telling you guys that, you, that it's a closed economy. You can't use it for anything else. The next one was 15i. So let me go to 15, 15. I, and this one is pretty straight to the point. You understand that Lino points may not be sold and have no value. So they're telling you that Lino has no value, that there is no cash out. It's a basically, it's a, a basically closed system currency, uh, type, it's a closed currency system, I guess, or whatever economy. Um, and they're instructing you specifically, they don't have any value. Now, this could be a, a, a CYA thing, a cover your ass thing, where basically it's like, okay, well, when everybody loses money on this deal, then, well, we told you it has no value, so you kind of just threw your money away. Sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, but I don't want to, again, I don't want to paint them as like the bad guys, because, you know, they're they're just getting started. I went through all of their LinkedIn shit. I'm going to show you guys the LinkedIn shit that I found, uh, so you guys can see for yourself that it is, that is, seems like it's just another startup. Which some folks at the helm trying to make trying to make some money uh, on a streaming platform. So going through their uh, their actual welcome letter, they go and they discuss how the uh, how the locking system works for their currency. Now keep in mind, you should know D Live and Lino are two different entities. Okay, that it's not entirely clear, not entirely clear when you're when you're like part of the D Live. You think that oh, it's just it's like bits. But imagine though, if Bits was its own company, that's what this is. It that's what this is. Lino is its own standalone company, it's got a different address and all of that versus uh, Lino. So just imagine if Twitch and Bits were two different companies just down the street from each other, quite literally down the street from each other. Uh, and so I, I was scrolling down and I saw this. I, I was like, "Does all sound good?" And then I saw this guy Charles Wayne. And so I decided to go and find who the fuck is Charles Wayne. So I went to go dig and find out more about him. We're not digging up any dirt. I'm just showing you guys uh, what I found here. So uh, first off, I found his I found his Twitter account, and his Twitter account is fairly new. Like I mean, he he just started tweeting uh, about D Live, and that's pretty much it. Back in uh, 2018, so that just a few months ago, he just showed up and he's he's. I've done further research to see if this person actually exists. Yes, I was that I was that kind of like paranoid. It's like, is this person fucking real? Uh, because anytime I see a Twitter account that only goes back a few months, I instantly think fake. Uh, but this person is real. I have done done some more digging. They're definitely real. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we should still talk about how the two networks work together. The two the two companies work together. So first thing I did was uh, I went to go look for the people on LinkedIn to go see where they're at. Um, and I found here uh, the Lino network and it has 20 employees. And so I was like, cool, all right. And looking at the photos, it's like, all right, I know that this person works with, Char with uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Wayne, because the photos are basically identical. Uh, boop, you pop that up. And then over here, you could see uh, there's uh, Wilson Way, uh, basically the same photo, uh, Roran Sun, uh, Sosa Sang. So these, these just by looking at the photos, it's like, okay, these people all definitely know each other. Like they'd all work together. So even though, even though Charles Wayne does not show up in the, uh, as being associated with Lino, according to their employees on here, uh, we at least know that he's close. They're close enough where you know, we could say, okay, these are two sister companies basically that are working together, but they're just maintaining separate entities for whatever reason that might be. I don't know. C cover your ass. Who knows? Uh, but I was interested in like, what is the experience level for these people? Right? So look, here's Wilson way. He's the co-founder. By the way, all this information is public. Just so you know, all this information is public. We're not doxing anybody or anything crazy. I'm just curious because in order to take on Twitch, like you've got to have, you've got to have like quite a bit of experience. And so I want to see what kind of experience some of these folks have. And so I decide, okay, the co-founder, who's the co-founder at Lino? Uh, and it's like, I go and I look and I see, oh, okay. So he graduated from UC Berkeley uh, in, or from, uh, I'm sorry, well, yeah, UC Berkeley uh, in 2016. And he went right to work on Lino. Okay, so probably not a whole lot of, uh, uh, of actual experience uh, on this. But a lot of people get started that way. They just, they got out of college. They started, they started working on a website and it got huge. Totally plausible. Um, the head of marketing has some actual experience, but I'm not worried about the marketing. I'm more worried about the tech side, uh, to be honest. Uh, uh, Rora Sun, Rora and Sun, she had an internship in 2017 for a few months. Uh, and now she's a software engineer for Lino. 
Uh, a lot of them are, a lot of the people that are in engineering positions are, are fairly young, right? Fairly young, like they don't necessarily have a whole lot of experience. Uh, this gentleman does. 2011, actually prior to that. Uh, so this guy's got this Android developer, so he's got quite a bit of experience. Um, who was, one of them actually, uh, one of them stood out to me. Oh yeah, uh, Leon Trian, or Tian, uh, he is head of infrastructure at Leno Networks. So I was like, oh, head of infrastructure? Definitely wanna go ahead and see uh, what kind of experience this guy has. And it turns out he actually works for Twitch right now. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually he works he works with Twitch right this second. So uh, according to this, could this could have been this could have been uh, uh, something that uh, that perhaps um, he hasn't updated yet. Entirely possible. But according to this, uh, it does say that he works for Twitch. I thought it was kind of funny. So at least they have somebody who has worked on a streaming platform actually doing work for them. So that's good. That's a good thing, right? It's funny, but <laughs> still, it's a good thing. But for the most part, a lot a lot of the developers are are fairly young uh, in terms of experience. Um, uh, what was this guy's software engineer at Lena? I think this guy this guy yeah this guy worked at Google for a little bit uh, all the way back to 2014. So so this is the the Lino side. You can see that their where they live thing uh, shows uh, the U.S., San Francisco Bay Area, great basically California, and then there's like one dude in Hong Kong and one dude in uh, uh, in Great New York or or young lady in uh, in New York City, um, and then. There's what was it? This one is uh, Lino. Now let's go and pull up D Live. Now I didn't know that they were two different companies until I couldn't find uh, uh, Charles. Um, oh fucking a! What was his name? Charles. Uh, Charles Wayne. I couldn't find Charles Wayne, and so oh, did I lose that in that. No, I did not. Uh, and so I went digging for him specifically so that way I could find him, and I found that he was associated directly with uh, the D Live page where we have 22 employees. Some of them, I don't think they're actual employees. I think they're actually like just people latching on. Like one of them is like a variety streamer at Mixer or something. And it's like, okay, I don't know who this guy is, but he's injected himself into this into this network by saying he's associated with it. Uh, the actual, uh, the, the the worldwide, uh, ge I guess the geographic spread of their, of, their, uh, uh, of their employees is Turkey, United States, San Francisco, Korea, United Kingdom. So pretty much all of the, like all over the world. Uh, a lot of this is what you would expect, I guess, from more front end stuff. You have like, uh, you, you, you have translator, web designer, head of design, media design. Uh, there's like a, I think there's a, um, yeah, community. So a lot of this is front end stuff. Uh, the first launch, they were specifically targeting the market in Turkey. I'm not surprised by that given, I mean, well, given this, uh, and also given some of the streams that I found while scrolling through, uh, and looking at, um, at like, you know, what, like who, who is streaming on this platform. So... <sighs> So what I can gather is it's interesting to me that there's two different companies that are essentially operating as one. Again, Imagine if Bits had its own, uh, had its very own company <laughs> dedicated to it. That that's that to me seems interesting. I don't know if it's bad or if it's good because be, because honestly, like I could I could think of probably a few ways just companies that I've worked for where it's like yeah, I could see why that that comp that part of the company is a separate entity altogether. Because it was like we had we had companies that were operating independently, but they worked they worked in the same office. Um, and in this case, you know, they're in the same town. They're in, they're both in Cupertino, uh, but they are um, uh, they're still but they're like you know not in the same office building or anything like that. So again, this is I I can't really I can't tell you with any degree of certainty if the if this is going to be a solid streaming service because it's a mixed bag. We have, you know, and uh, we have some seasoned folks that are involved in this in this thing. A lot of the people that who are in the C level positions is co co founders and C you know, the CTO, the head of infrastructure, like all all that stuff. Like a lot of them are fairly young um, in terms of experience, and so it's so it's so I don't know what that would mean for uh, uh, for feature rollout because that's what I care about, right? I don't care if they have like you know if, if they have uh, um, I don't care how old they are or whatever. All I care about is if you're going to have a streaming service, I'm going to hold you to the same standard that I hold Epic to Steam because we already have a service that does, you know, quite well. Twitch does fantastic. There's also YouTube that does pretty well on its own. Uh, and so, but but there's there's just a, a, a massive collection of features that are part of that. And some of them are like critical core features uh, as part of those services. And so 
that's why I wanted to go through. And that's why I dug up like all of the engineers and everything. Cause I wanted to see where they're from, what kind of experience they have, because you know what, if you have a bunch of, if you have a bunch of engineers and they're all, you know, fresh out of college, like they're either, you're either going to get some like superb, crazy ideas that you've never seen before. And it's going to be a revolutionary service, or they're not going to know what the fuck to do, uh, what, what to roll out first or anything like that. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, I can't give you guys any kind of a definitive answer on which, what, what this site is going to mean in the long run, but you should know that they, they say so themselves in the terms of service that, you know, Lino has no value. So this is not a cryptocurrency type thing that you're going to go through and spend, you know, buy a bunch of, uh, of Lino, their, their, their currency, and then, uh, and then somehow turn around and, and sell it and make money off of it or anything like that. Uh, it is a closed system. Uh, you can earn Lino by just participating and, and, uh, and doing things on the website and you could gift Lino and you can lock down your Lino and earn a return on the Lino. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do with Lino, except cash in, I guess, um, with shenanigans uh, that have happened to cryptocurrency. It may be a sign. Yeah. So that's the thing with, with cryptocurrency already getting a bad rap. I mean, it's 2019, 2018, we already went through that entire thing where it's like every other cryptocurrency was a scam of some sort. It's here one second, gone the next. YouTubers are blowing up and just you know, because they're talking about cryptocurrency while they're walking their dog or some weird shit. It was a really weird time. Um, and we've learned now that it's like, all right, well, let's like not do that. Let's not like buy into every cryptocurrency that pops up. Uh, and this is, you know, they 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 talk about you know blockchain and all this shit, right? But decentralized excuse me, unmoderated, all that shit. You know, it says decentralized, unmoderated, but I'm fairly certain if I got on there and started editing some nudes that there might be an issue with that, even if it's an X-rated category. I'm sure the X-rated category is probably for people who draw nude stuff, draw risque, not safe for work stuff, because drawing is okay. But once they get around to being like editing nudes, that's a, that's a liability. Not, I'm not saying that I need a place to stream that stuff. I'm saying that the platform itself is, uh, is, super liable for the content when you edit nudes because you don't know how old that person is in the photo and you have to be able to prove it and the last thing they want is for somebody to get on and edit some fucking nudes of somebody that's under the under the age or they don't have a release for and all of a sudden it's a huge issue and the site gets taken down so yeah this is a um you know they they have, they have x-rated content or whatever uh that doesn't necessarily mean that they they have a they allow whatever to be streamed on it um, <clears throat> I, I worry that if it's a scam, a dip scheme that blows up before it caches, ca oh, sorry, uh, uh, crashes in some crazy fashion, it paints another black mark on the streaming video scene in the public eye. Yeah. Yeah. And it also will further, it'll just basically further, uh, uh, I guess solidify the fact that, you know, maybe Twitch and YouTube are the only two platforms that could pull this off and maybe Mixer. Uh, yeah. People need to be a tad more conservative with their disposable income. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, no, Brian, you're good. We're good. We just started. We just finished the first story. It was the biggest story on here, but you're good. Uh, best friend, best friend who's not a gamer, will just found Twitch so she could be she could support a specific person and she complains about the usability on a daily basis. All they have to do is make it easy for the average person on to use, and they can grab that YouTube average person market. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that experience might be. Um, but I know that there's some like some ways of accessing streams and everything that's kind of a pain in the dick. Like not being able to have like a watch later thing for VODs, like a playlist type feature or whatever for VODs. Like I feel like that's kind of something that uh, would make uh, uh, that would make Twitch a little bit more user friendly for people that only get to watch VODs sometimes like me. Um, all they have to do. <laughs> so I guess this is why PewDiePie was in Japan a few weeks ago. I don't. Well, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say that's the case at all because they're located in Cupertino and most of the staff is Chinese. So I don't think that's anything to do with Japan personally. Might be something else he's working on. But, but still, DLive is, uh, is going to be picking up a lot of steam. Getting PewDiePie on is a pretty big deal, uh, because, you know, you can, you know, he's got quite the following, so they're definitely going to be flooded. I'm very curious to see what happens when they actually go live, uh, if the site ends up just tipping over. I'm sure they're probably ramping up to try to figure out how, how to support all of these people that are going to be watching. But I guess we'll find out over the weekend. Uh, how much do they pay? That's a real question. That's a really good question. You know what's interesting? Uh, let me actually go to PewDiePie's page because PewDiePie's page is actually live right now, technically. Um, let me see here. Make sure the music's off. Right now, there are two 
2,360 people watching this stream. This is a stream. Let me hover over mouse over so you see this is a stream right here. Um, so there's, uh, there's 2,300 people watching this stream right now. You can see chat is moving. Uh, a lot of people are following. He's getting donations. I mean, he's already gotten, uh, uh, see, 26 to, so he's gotten about 7,000 uh, Lino, which equates to, uh, what is that? I guess uh 70 bucks <laughs> is that right it's like what one cent is one bit basically right or one lino uh but anyways you can see that there's like he's getting um he has tons of people watching right now just waiting for the uh uh you know waiting for the show to go live here in a couple of days and he's he's earned you know a, this is that this is just the top three contributors by the way uh his actual lino value that he's earned it says 13.6 but I also, there's a bigger number if we go to the homepage here. Please don't be any titties. Uh, if you go to the homepage here, it says right here that he has a value of 229.27 uh, Lino. So that's a lot of money. Like now, now that's some money that we could talk about right there. Um, now, Kimmy, uh, if Lino has a value, why are they showing its value in dollars? Uh, I think the more interesting question is why are they showing Lino uh, on everything? Why? Like, imagine if, like, on the front page of Twitch, you see uh, the streamer name and how many subs they have. I think that's weird. I think that's a weird thing to, like, put up there. Like, I don't necessarily disclose how many subs I, I mean, I'll say what it is if I'm asked, but uh, I just think it's odd that they, that, th that their cryptocurrency is equally as important as the actual person who's the face behind that number. Um... Patreon has an option that you could hide it. Uh, they've removed it, but they put it back in. But no, they, you could you could hide that number in Patreon. Um, and also, I wouldn't compare Patreon to this uh, at all. Like, I, I I get what you're saying. It's like, well, people are contributing money and all that stuff. But um, but I think that in, in in the world of streaming, I think this holds. This is kind of in a different realm. Um, and again, I do think it's odd that they put the Lino at the very uh, front and center. Bearing in mind that Lino and DLive are two different entities, so they are clearly working pretty close together <laughs> in order to pull off whatever it is, the, you know, pull off launching a, a, a new site like this. So it could pro it's probably just for their own protection. They just want to make it so that they can, uh, you know, dip out if they need to. And if they sacrifice one of the companies, and that's totally fine, they don't lose their, they don't lose their shit on the other one. Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Let's have to wait and see. It's a good way to get entice people to stream on their platform. Absolutely. People associate that with personal value. Yeah, I, 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 I get it, right? Like they, they'll look at this and they'll see like, whoa, I could, I could make this much money on this service. You know, it's like 229,000 Lino translates into uh, uh, 2200, uh, 2200, basically $2,300. Um, how that payout is handled, I have no idea. But I don't, and, I, and honestly, I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone has been paid from the service yet. But I'm sure at this point they have. Okay. I don't know of anybody, uh, but it's already been up and running for like four months or so. Somebody has gotten, has had to get paid or we would have known about it. If they weren't paying people, we would know about it. What up? How's it going, guns? Oh, it's going in now. Now, first of all, uh, I want to make sure you do not have an NDA or anything like that outstanding, correct? I do have an NDA on some stuff, but I know what I can and can't talk about. Okay. All right. So for, for the people who are um, confused, who who is this guns? Well, you guys all know guns. But it's what guns did that we need to talk about. Guns try to mask his voice, make a robot voice. <laughs> I'll just lower the bit rate in Discord. Yeah, I'll do the job. Wait, wait, wait. Is it really like all robotic? <laughs> no, it's not. I'm saying like we should do it to disguise your voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put a filter over it like post. Just like, they told me to bring them on. Uh, all right. So you used to do, you, you said that you used to do onboarding and um, I guess some kind of acquisition or, or setting up for new streamers coming onto the service, correct? For DLive. Yeah, it for was... DLive. For DLive specifically, mm -hmm. very separate from Lino. They they treated them as very separate entities internally as well. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So they are definitely two different entities. Okay. And what did um, you what did you do for them? So it was the original guy that hired me is no longer there, and they were essentially paying me an amount of money on a monthly basis to stream on the platform. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. That's how it originally started. 
Uh, and I was like, Shh, fuck yeah, I'll do that. Um, no one's ever paid me to stream beforehand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, why not? Uh, yeah. So I was streaming on there for close to six months. Wow. Um, okay. It's a fair and amount of time. Yeah, this was late 2018, like up until pretty much November, December of 2018. Okay. Um, the big thing that I disliked about it and like I just kind of knew they weren't going anywhere from my personal standpoint. Real quick, real quick. That, wait, real quick. I'm sorry. You said that you were streaming on DLive for six months before leading up to December? Yes. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me just, yeah. I'm just going to scroll up, but, but go ahead and continue here. I'm, I'm scrolling back to the very beginning of DLive on, on uh, Twitter here, because I'm fairly certain the, that they started on like really showing a, their, uh, go ahead. Their Twitter came pretty late. Yeah. Pretty late. Okay. Twitter so they're just late came, to the Twitter game. Uh, some of the oldest people that are on there, I think started streaming sometime in 2017. Okay. Um, All right. That's the, when, that's when the company I, was founded technically. So that makes sense. Uh, the idea of DLive came from, uh, when Bitcoin got really, really big, so they wanted to create a um, chain block cryptocurrency, um, which is Lino. And but the idea was generated when Bitcoin was worth way more money. Right. Yeah. And well, then the market 000. took a yeah, the market took a nosedive, and it's still worth an amount of money. But um, they had a lot of a lot of people are saying. Like if you go, so originally D Live was also a, um, it was linked to a uh, forms website where people could create and post content and forms and information and stuff like that, or create videos. It wasn't just a pure streaming service. It was connected to that website beforehand, and uh, they disconnected from that uh, late 2018 uh, to become just their standalone streaming platform connected with Lino. Okay. Do they so? Do they have a uh, cryptocurrency connection prior to Lino, uh, or were they just? Yes, I don't remember what it was though. Yeah, it was like some just kind of generic coin. Okay, but this makes um, sense because everybody was jumping on that bandwagon in two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen. So this all like totally makes sense on the timeline. Uh, and Rob, the guy that was actually uh the one in charge of me, mm -hmm. had actually mentioned like towards the end of twenty eighteen something about like what if we could get PewDiePie on. And I told him, sure, it's a great idea, but I mean, like, you know, unless he's actually going to generate a lot of viewership and consistent following. The the biggest problem that they had was, um, and to be honest with you, uh, PewDiePie is kind of like their last shot in the dark before they go bankrupt. Um, oh, you think so? Terms, like, oh, it absolutely is. Before wow. they throw, they're throwing all the money at him that they have, essentially thinking maybe 100 million YouTube subs can buy us some concurrency on our website uh -huh. because if you go to the actual website and look i guarantee you the highest streamer doesn't have more than excluding a d live official stream which probably has something like three or four thousand viewers but the highest independent streamer on d live does not have more than 500 viewers right now and it was way worse before pewdiepie was there i uh, just 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 so you guys know I'm, I'm looking at the page right here and it's just looking at individual streamers it's like there's pewdiepie's channel which is getting 2100 and then it goes and then it goes down from there. 254 for the second one, 89, 88, 87. Yep. And it just basically goes down from there. This is under all. So unless they filter them out, I don't really know. But we go to D Live nah. official 37. Yeah. yeah. You're, on... Yo, you're right. So basically sub 100 for for most 99% of the people on the channel with 99.99% uh, actually, because there's only one person that has over 100 streams. And, and uh, if you actually look uh, at that's PewDiePie's, PewDiePie's channel, it's not even PewDiePie's channel. That's just like D Live running some background bullshit, which. A lot of people have also um, accused them of view botting certain things. Interesting. Well, they definitely um, have people being active in here um, right now, and I'm sure that when they're live, they're going to have some people. I mean, when you have 100 million subscribers on YouTube, they're going to get some kind of influence. But you're you're saying that they're uh, this is potentially the last their their last hurrah to try to make something happen with this platform. Then it absolutely is because beforehand they were looking at. So streaming is a global market, right? Like if you're a live streaming service, you're trying to tackle every single country there is. It would be dumb of you to just try to go after one particular country. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to focus on one third world European country who had an unstable economy 
because they saw the most viewership numbers from it. Interesting. Do you know what country this was? I do, but I can't talk about that. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Um, so they that. were focusing on just that one country. And so there was a lot more North American support in the mid 2018s and towards the end of 2018s when they started to shift that support off to try to go to strictly European markets, uh, which is they, at that point they were kind of already considering letting me go as was because they wanted to heavily focus on European markets, which purity pie is also a pretty heavy European market as it is. Um, and, uh, so I was just kind of like, well, I'm going to just get out of here, out of this situation and everything like that right now anyway. Okay. So interesting. Um, what was the, like, what was the onboarding process for like a new, a new streamer? Was it just show them the ropes and that's it? Um, no. So essentially, um, if you signed up with D live, um, D live holds all the rights to your brand for streaming on any blockchain live streaming service. So not exclusively live streaming services like Mixer or Twitch or, or YouTube, but a blockchain related live streaming service, which apparently there's more than just DLive out there. Oh. Um, yeah, but you don't know they exist because no one cares about this. Yeah. So, uh, wow. So that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. Like they would essentially hold the, the especially on a service where they tout it as being you know unmoderated and kind of like you know basically the land of the free kind of like streaming platform um that they would so you're saying that any other blockchain based um platform streaming platform they would uh you would not be allowed to i guess push your brand on that wow that's pretty interesting I don't, yeah i don't know what kind of abilities they have to stop you from pushing your brand on those other platforms right because they barely have any kind of moderation or tools on this website as it is but um, they would try, supposedly. I've never seen them try it, though. Right. Uh, and so you, you, you uh, left, the, left them when? Uh, late 2018. Okay, so not that long like ago, really. Like early December. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. It's like five months or something. Um, wow, yeah. I mean, it's a service that I, I didn't hear about until... Until PewDiePie <laughs> I said he was going to stream on it. And, and it's funny. I didn't hear about it. And like, I know you guns. And so I didn't even know that this site exists and you were streaming on it. You know, how often did you stream? Uh, pretty much. I, I would stream to both Twitch and DLive at the same time. I did. Sometimes I tried to do like streams just catered to DLive content. But th this is the thing that I've learned with like DLive and other streaming platforms and why it's not working for Mixer either. Um, if somebody's already on a platform, the incentivization you have to give a viewer to go to another platform has to be so massive. Yeah, it's true. Because um, KMagic101, who's a friend of Gathalians and Bromans, he left Twitch and he went to Mixer. And he, he suffered a lot of viewership loss because people on Twitch that watched KMagic just went and found another streamer like KMagic on Twitch because the market's over flooded on Twitch with a billion viewers like him or yeah. a billion, billion streamers like him. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's good. That goes, that comes down to like the features and everything. Uh, just actually yeah. just from a technical, like a technical question, when you were streaming, what was the latency like, like to chat respect react and interaction? Pretty bad. It's about 30 or 40 seconds. What? 30 or 40 yeah. seconds? That's huge. Yeah. That is, that's worse than like, yeah, that's worse than like bad. 2012, that's 2012 huge stream numbers. <laughs> yes. Some days it, it could have good days. Okay. Like in the low 15. But that was now, now it should also like just to, just a caveat is that he, this was like six months ago or so. So this, this yeah. could, they could have made it improve the platform and maybe it's less latency now it or was, whatever. It, it we'll was absolutely know. definitely one of their most talked about things uh, in terms of improvement was just improvement of the website. But here's the thing, like go search like obscure games on their like directory and you won't find half of them. That's another one of their huge problems that they have is that like they're not going to attract Fortnite streamers and they're not going to attract like the the PUBG or the you know, Apex or the League of Legends streamers. But if you search for like obscure games on there, you won't find that they even exist because they're just focusing on the big titles. Um, 
and anything that's gained a lot of traction and a lot of popularity. Um, so, like, if you actually search for... I just did this over Don't Starve. Nothing came up, but um, that could be the search. They have a number of games on here. A lot of them are bigger games. AAA, Skyrim, Not My Car Royale just came out. Uh, there's a category yeah. of a retro game. Let me see. Is Don't Starve on this list? It is... It is. It has to be because it just. Shot. Yeah, there it is. So it is. Don't start if it's on the list. Um, I would. Yeah. I, I. I understand if there's not like somebody. Somebody's actually watching and someone playing this right now. Oh, that is actually a live stream. Is this person like? Oh, he's not actually playing. Don't starve. Okay, that's the other stuff that he mentioned in the in the title there. Um, weed craft. Yeah, who's playing weed craft? Hold on, I see weed craft. That's a brand new game. It's new hotness, right? Someone's gotta play. Okay, I can't do it like that. Gotta do it through this fucking window here. Uh, it just doesn't matter ultimately because there's only like one person probably watching it. Um, yeah. So if you actually like when you're in that browse window, if you use the search bar on the top left hand corner at the very top of the oh page, up here on this side. Okay, search. sorry. There's yeah. there's two search bars. That'll actually search for there. It is weed craft. All right, my empire of dirt. So this person is live now. Nope. Stream starting soon. Someone did just pop up and they're gonna watch it. They're gonna play it. Um. Did you, was the, so the, so Lino was in or not in yet when you came out, when you left? It was not in yet. They transitioned to Lino uh, while I was there. Okay. So the Lino transition is actually fairly recent, which is probably makes sense as to why Charles Wayne didn't start tweeting and doing anything until, yes. um, until December, because that would be around Charles the time that Wayne is the CEO. Yeah. Yep. Oh, interesting. Cool. Well, thank you for the insight into Yo. the platform i appreciate it guns we'll uh we'll blur out your identity and oh yeah and all that you could find guns at guns games with a z guns games google it or twitch it whatever um thanks i appreciate it dude looks like it's an ether token oh is it i uh, so this oh ether scan here okay so they have oh they have a leno i see i see total supply did i what i say a billion right i was wrong 10 billion <laughs> <laughs> those make a billion now nah, they'll make 10 billion uh <laughs> and then this so this one address holds the majority stake so there you go right like that's pretty much this is pretty much i know i'm not totally familiar with um with how cryptocurrency as a whole works like in terms of like the the generating of, of the coin and, and and all that shit um but to me this entity here it must be the core of Lino that's going to hold on to this currency and only give it out like as needed, but maintaining the majority stake. Um, and let me see. And it looks like the transactions were made quite a, quite a, wow. So over a year ago, oh, a year and a half ago. Do we have any else here? Thanks for this link, by the way, the mad Russian hooking it up. Very interesting. What's on the analytics? Oh, okay, yeah, it just shows yeah, they got a ton of money, and then they started trickling out very, very little bit at a time. Um, that the Galactic Empire symbol. <laughs> it's pretty close. Price, yeah, price zero because because again, the price doesn't matter because it doesn't exist anywhere except for on the site, so it literally holds no value. Um, but because of the type of service that they're using to generate the coin, uh, or the token or whatever the the coins, they are um. It still has an entry in this log, but just being able to see now, it's like, okay, this, so this also, uh, says that there's 119,000, uh, holders. So that means 119,000 folks have, um, they, they have, uh, uh, actually made some kind of transaction using, uh, Lino on the site. Interesting. Go to the last page here, all the way down to a, a quantity of 320, which is Basically three bucks, essentially. I'm going to have to uh, edit this part into the, the news segment, actually. So if you're watching the news segment, we're going to get back to the real-time news now. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. For PewDiePie's perspective, he can always go back to YouTube. So why not take a big payout from DLive before they fall over? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty much it. Just like, you know, why, why not? Why not just go ahead and uh, uh, take a hit? And what hit is he taking, really? <laughs> Basically none. All right. Next up. Oh, hold on. Next up. 
It is now a crime to play Player Unknown's Battlegrounds in Nepal. I usually don't cover these kinds of stories because this isn't the first place, this isn't the first country that has uh, banned PUBG. I think PUBG Mobile was banned somewhere else about two months ago or so. Um, and now we have uh, Nepal is banning a player knows battle. Why, you may ask? Because they're getting reports that it's a bad influence on the children. And then when they tell kids to stop playing PUBG, they get mad and they throw their phone. So the proper course is to ban the game. Take it away from them. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to parent or anything like that. No, no way. <sighs> so uh, what's interesting here, and you know, they talk about it in this Rock, Paper, Shotgun uh, article, is it says here, according to reports from multiple news sites, it's been banned in Nepal. Uh, permission was granted by the Kathmandu uh, District Court on Wednesday, the very same day that the Metropolitan Crime Division filed a public interest litigation asking for a ban on the grounds that the game was having a negative, effect, negative effect on the behavior and study of children and youth. The same day it went from, hey, we recommend going ahead and uh, banning this game. And the same day they actually do it. Just crazy how fast that works. Uh, and so it says that we, we received a number of complaints from parents, schools, and school associations regarding the effect of the game on children, senior superintendent said. Uh, we also held discussions with a psychiatrist before requesting the Kathmandu District Court for permission to ban the game. Parents and schools had complained that the game was affecting their children's studies and making them more aggressive. Uh, when we consulted with psychiatrists, they also said that violence in the game can make people aggressive in real life. Which, we've had lots of studies that have proven otherwise, but the ones that they spoke to said that, yes, it makes people, it makes people violent in real life. I also want to note that Nepal, um, Nepal actually banned pornography. Uh, hold on, I have that link. They actually banned pornography just last year. Nepal bans porn sites to curb sexual violence. And this was, uh, October 2018. So it seems that they have, Nepal has a, uh, I guess their, what is it, modus operandi, where they say, um, wow, these people are doing this thing. Clearly they're influenced by blank. Let's take that away from them. Instead of focusing on the person or the persons or whatever, they're trying, they're trying, they're, they're taking the, the wrong approach, man. They took away, oh, like all these sexual, just, you know, uh, sex crimes are occurring. Let's take away porn. <laughs> oh, all this violence is happening. Uh, let's take away violent video games. Just fucking like not the right approach. Just ban life. I know. I know. Just what like and, and the, the, I don't know what I don't know what the science is between what happens if you take away people's porn. Right. But I would be upset if you took away my porn. <laughs> right. Like, what does that mean? And also, like, it's not really a solution. It's not a solution. I feel like it actually will probably make things worse. It'll probably make things worse. But anyways, Nepal has clearly uh, a habit of doing this kind of thing. So I guess we shouldn't necessarily be surprised that they're banning PUBG uh, because their kids are violent. Because they want to blame everything other than, I guess, themselves. Which, uh, yeah, wow. Um, Japan is the most fucked up point you'll ever see. And, uh, what, what, what? and we're the least violent place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Nepal is definitely operating under their own strange rules with how they handle everything and and nepal has had some fuck like a fucked up history with their uh in terms of like you know uh um rapes and shit like they had a really fucked up history just last year actually that are that's a, a major event that occurred there that actually led to them banning porn um instead of you know trying to find an actual solution for the issue right uh and this is just them doing it again. So whatever the next, I don't know, maybe maybe they're tired of these kids getting up and fucking flossing in the middle of class. Maybe they'll ban Fortnite as well and every other game that that comes out that they deem, oh well, we can't we can't possibly discipline our kids and talk to them about these things. So what we should do is make it disappear. That'll solve the issue. Speaking of making things disappear. Ubisoft apologizes for a homophobic slur in The Division 2. It has been removed. But, uh, 
somebody went through and decided that they were going to go and make uh, and take a bunch of pictures of all these like crazy, just like cooks and Kahir. Kahir. How about this one? Uh, tip over Hazaro. How about this one? Uh, any illegal traffic on its net rock? <laughs> <laughs> two for one. This is, this is kind of funny, actually. We hate Mondays too. Two for one soda on every first day of the week. And then the, the, it says Monday is not the first day of the week in the United States. <laughs> maybe being a little, maybe a little nitpicky, uh, just a little bit. Drover instead of driver. Uh, cha 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 latte uh, instead of chocolates. Uh, declared. Uh, sir, sir, what, sir, if, sir, I can't even do it. Anyways, they're going through and they're, and they're, and they're, one, this one person is like reading everything in the division and, and, and basically being the grammar Nazi, uh, all over. Uh, I, I've not, you haven't noticed any of these? Cause this person is clearly going through and looking, but in doing so, they did come across, I mean, there's tons of them here, right? They did come across this one, uh, and I can't necessarily, maybe I could do this and get a little bit closer view here. Um, so you guys can see what it says, but this one is the one that they are, that, that was in question where it's like, all right, that one seems, seems a little deliberate, which is actually what the comment says on this, or hands of fi. So this is, this is like, this is the shit that you would do on calculators, like boobs, right? What is it? Five, eight, zero, zero, eight or whatever. Uh, and this is basically the same thing, right? Uh, so, so. They, in doing in doing this checking of every piece of text dialogue or whatever that's available in uh, uh, in Division Two, they have actually gone through and uh, discovered this. So Ubisoft, of course, they they see it and they've um, they they uh, they have removed it from what I hear. Uh, and it says here, it says, uh, let me read some of this. It's been brought to our attention that a piece of street art in Tom Clancy's Division 2 contained offensive content. We removed the image from the game via patch on Thursday. Now, we should, we, just to give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Wow, that was actually blocked again. <laughs> Rawr. Um, just to give the benefit of the doubt. Um, we shouldn't assume that Ubisoft did all of this art. Uh, just like Kimmy said, they probably contracted a bunch of street art, uh, uh, contract, contract, a bunch of, uh, street artists and such, and just didn't do a good job of screening it. Yeah. Yeah. Like seriously, like that, that's pretty much what it is. Like, so we shouldn't necessarily be like really mad at, at Ubisoft. Uh, this is just like, great. Like some fucking artist thought it'd be funny to squeeze that in there. Uh, and, and now, and then they, they got it in the game and then there it is uh is the street art in the city irl i really don't think so if it was there'd be an argument to keep it but at the same time it's a game just take it out like there's no point in this like no there's no place for it for that in the game uh in a, in, a, in, a, in a modern day game um and it says we apologize we apologize that this image slipped through our content review processes and we are currently reviewing them in order to avoid this kind of oversight from occurring in the future they did not say at any point in this, that they were going to go through and correct all of the misspellings and grammar issues that they found. Uh, so, I will say this is a start. Removing this is a start. So, we'll see. Uh, slurs are slurs regardless IRL or not. Yeah, what I'm saying is if it actually, if, if they scanned it off of like, you know, an actual art piece and then put it in, like that's what I'm saying. Like, um, they, that's probably how they missed it. But they, they probably, like Kimmy said, they probably just you know, paid people to go through or went through and found a bunch of art. They're like, oh yeah, this works. And then they, doop, they put it in there. Um, I see number. I'm not seeing an issue. Oh, well, Rar, I, get, I can't really help you there, buddy. I can't really help you there. If you can't see the issue, I, I, I don't believe I can help you. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Speaking of things being removed, I'm getting all right at this. A real-life lobbyist was permanently banned in EVE Online. Now, EVE always delivers some of the most controversial news that we've gotten so desensitized to because it happens all the time. It's like, oh my god, another major like scam occurred in, uh, in EVE. It's like, oh, another one? Remember, we used, to like, we used to headline these stories, man, like back in like the uh, 2012, 13, because, uh, yeah, because it was juicy. It was great drama. Exactly. It was like, it was, this was good shit. Uh, and this one, I feel like 
deserves equally as much attention because it is probably the most absurd thing that's happened in Eve. Like this guy is a real life lobbyist. He's a re real life uh, uh, guy working in politics, lawyer, uh, and he is, um, and he and he got nailed for corruption and fired. Now, what you guys should know is these uh, CSM positions, they call them CSM, these are elected positions, okay? Um, these are elected positions that people will actually, um, you know, they'll, they'll actually campaign for to be part of this, uh, uh, this council that, that represents the players. This is pretty prestigious in the EVE world, and I feel like it's something that should also be respected elsewhere because... When you talk about Eve, you're talking about a lot of real time money, like real money investments. You're talking about like, you know, these people treat this shit like a business. Uh, nerd, nerds. Uh, <laughs> uh, but given the amount of money actually lost and the money's exchanged hands, like, you know, in Eve, um, you know, it, through the various corporations and the work that some of these people have done and everything, uh, you know, when you, when you actually elect people into position to represent the game, the player base, that's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, I would even say if there was elected officials or elected ambassadors or whatever for World of Warcraft, it wouldn't hold quite the power that, uh, or quite the influence or, or importance that somebody in EVE does, even though EVE is, you know, ar arguably a smaller game right now. Um, and so, uh, CCP has gone through and, uh, and fired him from this position. They let him go from this position and he, he has actually taken to Twitter this is what you do, by the way. Um, this is right. Maritime union official, former GOP election official, lawyer, blah, 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 blah. Um, he was permanent banned. Yeah, he was, he was gone. He was out. He says right here. It says, for those asking, I do not know why I was banned from Eve and removed from the CSM. Uh, I have asked for clarification and I've received none. I categorically deny any wrongdoing and look forward to clearing my name and having my reputation restored. Uh, and then he responds again. Uh, it was just like a day later, I think. No, it was the same day, same day. He says, here's my statement on the, my removal and banning from the CSM. Still have heard nothing in response to my repeated inquiries. We'll open up this link here. Uh, yeah, he's seriously mad about being busted for corruption on his uh, fake, <laughs> his fake IRL job. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, no, CSM, yeah, the, that, that player council or whatever, like they, we've covered drama that has occurred in the CSM realm before, uh, because it is, yeah, there is a history of drama, uh, uh, surrounding that. So he wrote this whole thing, uh, where he basically goes through and he says, um, I received an email from a senior GM this morning informing me that I've been removed from CSM and permanently banned from EVE online for a breach of the CSM's non-disclosure agreement. The email provided no information regarding the allegations, charges, and evidence supporting such a ban. I am innocent of these allegations. I have not and would not violate the NDA I signed after being elected to the CSM. I have not provided any proprietary information furnished by CCP to me as a CSM member to anyone. Uh... And then he says later on, he says, as an attorney and a public figure in the United States, my ethics and reputation are re regulated by a code of professional responsibility and statutory law, unlike CCP's op opaque community team. As a licensed attorney for nearly a decade, I have never had a, a complaint filed against me. I have served in positions of public trust in the United States government and have never had a complaint filed against me. The claims that I would risk my reputation by providing proprietary or otherwise confidential information to members of my own alliance for personal gain are false. Now, we may never get any kind of uh, follow-up on this ever, right? But when he talks about, when he talks about this like, hey, this is my reputation, uh, and I don't think he actually threatens libel or anything in here, but was it libel? Yeah. So, but he does say as an attorney and a public figure, and when you label yourself as a public figure, you kind of leave yourself open to being attacked like this. Like, as a public figure, people have a lot more flexibility in what they're allowed to say about you. And since he comes out himself and says it, in the same line he says he's an attorney, uh, he kind of sets, he kind of like puts himself at a bit of a disadvantage here. But probably pretty heated and uh, probably really wants to get his job back in the, uh, as a CSM, I guess. I mean... <laughs> I was just going through his Twitter feed, like trying to figure out like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Cause he's pretty active on Twitter. Like he's a fairly active individual on Twitter. Um, 
mostly covering like whatever, uh, commenting on, on, on just a number of, uh, the things taking pictures of President Trump and uh, is that Tom Hanks looking guy? Uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just yeah. So he's pretty active on Twitter uh, as of right now, and so yeah, he got fired from his virtual job and he's a little upset. And I don't want to say virtual job like it's like you know again. I don't want to play down the role of being elected as CSM uh, for Eve, uh, but but technically it is a virtual job. Uh, he counter sued for defamation and loss of wages. Loss of wages. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you see, uh, is he a closet German that works for wait, a bit of entertainment for work? I don't know. Let's see, Teddy Torn. Oh, sorry. Um, he's active on the forums. Active on the forums as well. He has a lot of enemies in game. Oh, so you're saying that he could have been set up? See, see, this is the kind of this is the kind of of juicy uh, Eve drama that I live for. I actually have on my wish list a. Um, what is it? It's like stories from Eve or something. I think it's, it's an audiobook. No, I think it's, I'm sure it's an audiobook. Somewhere, somewhere on my Amazon, I have that, that, you know, the greatest stories in Eve or whatever, a compilation. And one of these days I'm going to get it and, uh, and read it because there's been so much drama that's happened in Eve that you seriously, they should just make movies about this shit. Just like, just make a series and just take these stories that things that actually happened in Eve and turn it into an actual series. Totally doable, one hundred percent doable. So yeah, that's your that's your like weird news. <laughs> More than saying the actual lobbyist gets fired from his uh, from his elected position. Um, next up, De defamation. Wait, what did I say? Oh, talking to somebody else. Um, that's probably a typo. Uh, is anybody interested in Anno eighteen hundred? They have a beta or something going on this weekend, and um, this is kind of a short hit because it's kind of it's pretty interesting because I don't think we've seen it like this where on their steam page, they've said, they say sales of anno 1800 will be discontinued on steam after April 16th due to a publisher decision to make the game exclusive to another PC store. Just so you know, you can get the game right now on steam as long as you get it before April 16th and you'll be able to play it on steam. But after that, you're going to have to buy it from either Ubisoft or, uh, um, yeah, for you play or from, uh, uh, the Epic game store. Uh, it says we apologize to steam customers that were expecting to be available for sale after the April 16th release date. So this is the publisher has assured us that all prior sales of the game will be fulfilled. Steam owners will be able to play it. Yeah. It's going to go to Epic. They, they don't say, they say another PC store. Uh, but really it's, there's two, there's two stores that are carrying it. You play who is the publisher of the game, uh, and, uh, Epic game store who is just going to buy whatever game they possibly can. Now, I know that we've talked about Epic game store. Some people support it. Some people don't. I know we go back and forth and all this stuff on this, right? Um, but one thing that I discovered in the comments here that I thought was pretty interesting, I did not know about this, um, is, and I'll, read, I'll just read this comment here, another game not available here. In Korea, the Epic Store has two games, Shadow Complex Remastered and Fortnite. Everything else is region locked. Despite some of those, Subnautica, The Witness, etc., being available here on Steam, every game that Epic pays for exclusivity for becomes not available here at all. This is something I actually did not know, and it makes it even more fucked up that this is happening. That these games, because this there's been a lot of big titles that have gone over to Epic Game Store, and we bitch about it because we don't like exclusivity. But imagine not being able to play the game at all on PC. It's just another layer. It's just another thing. It's fucked up. It's super fucked up. I said, I'll just add this to the list of reasons why I don't like Epic Game Store. <laughs> oh man. And, and, and the Korean game market shouldn't be underplayed. We know, I mean, <laughs> the, the Korean game market is fucking massive, like super fucking massive. Uh, even more so than in the States. So for the, the fact that they're doing this is fucking weird. Just weird. Uh, but I, I, you know, somebody who's a gamer living overseas, I can see them being pretty upset. Uh, there's a lot of people that we know that are from the States that moved overseas, that moved to Korea, who uh, are, are not gonna be able to play some of these games unless they, well, until they eventually come out on, on Steam. Um, is the Epic Store segment the new Soldier Boy one just sad? Aww. 
No, it's not. Uh, I'm only, I'm only gonna, I, I, I would not talk about Anno 1800 and Epic. Um, I was not gonna talk about it until I saw this comment. And again, it just, it's just another layer of fucked up. Um, I mean, them getting another exclusive, fucking so what? Like, they keep, they keep doing it. I mean, they're gonna keep doing it until they run out of money or until whatever. Um, but the fact that now it's like, oh, it's fucking locked. People in Korea can't fucking play the game. And who knows? There's probably other locations too where it's region locked. That was just a dude in Korea. Like, we have no idea where else it could potentially be, um, released. I mean, let's take a look at the actual... Here's their actual Trello board. Somebody linked this to me before. Um, and on their actual Trello board, they have, oh boy, can I find it? Library improvements. Uh, here you go. Korean game releases. Support the release of store titles in Korea, including local ratings of currently live free titles. Date to be determined. So this is in the TBD pile. Date to be determined. It's not, there's, it doesn't even... <laughs> There's all these other features. Now, now keep in mind, some people that work on some of these features would have nothing to do with some of these other ones, right? But still, it, it is a little disheartening to see that over here in the, uh, the to be determined pile, we have Korean game releases, I mean, automated refunds, but still you get refunds, um, I guess. <laughs> Gifting, but specifically uh, Korea game releases. That's pretty fucked up. So yeah, there's your, there's your, Epic Game Store update of the week. Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's it. Holy shit. Did we get through that so fast? Was that fucking fast? Or was that like, oh, that's about the regular time. Okay, well, it's not that fast. It's about normal time. Normal time. Uh, so yeah, that's it, guys. So what do we got today? We got uh we got PewDiePie and Lino and D Live. Something to keep an eye on. Like, please keep an eye on it because we're gonna we're after this weekend, everyone's gonna be talking about it. So you're definitely gonna get um more information on that going forward but i wanted to at least show you guys what like the basis is it's like these are two different companies operating as one uh they put a massive em emphasis on um you know on, on the uh currency uh the way that the currency is is, is distributed and the way that the, the locking mechanism and all that stuff like that's all really important stuff to uh to keep in mind but, uh, oh, I guess Soldier, Soldier Boy got arrested. Oh, what? Hold on a second. Oh, we got it. We got it. You, 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 you. Soldier Boy arrested due to probation violations. Soldier Boy, a.k.a. Big Draco, was arrested yesterday in Los Angeles Court of Complex. The Atlanta rap rapper was booked on Thursday based on a Los Angeles judge ruling that he violated his probation multiple times. Quote the judge. <sighs> John, what do you say? What do you say? He's saying, say, the judge ain't gonna do shit. No, uh, we don't know what's, what was his actual violation. Does it actually say what his violation was? I uh, went to jail early because he violates probation. They found ammunition in his home. That's what it was. So there you go. There is your Soldier Boy update for the day, week, day, really, honestly. This just in. So Nintendo planted it. That's, that's what it is. Nintendo planted it. Oh, man. Ah, uh, soldier bullets. Yeah, were they soldier bullets? Soldier ammo. Soldier ammo. Uh, so that's it. Again, keep an eye out for D Live and uh, and Lino and PewDiePie and all that stuff because all that stuff's gonna be taken off next week. Um, if you're in Nepal, don't play PUBG. You can actually get arrested for playing PUBG. So fuck it, don't do it. Uh, see Ubisoft uh, apply. So yeah, don't don't uh, make sure you screen your artwork. Uh, don't get banned from Eve if you're uh, uh, if you're an elected official or a lobbyist rather. Uh, and um, enjoy Anno 1800 because I know some of you guys will. So just let me spray. Let's sprinkle, just sprinkle some crack and we'll uh, we'll get out of here. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This is Uncle Chat. Uncle Chat, say goodbye. My name is Mike B. You can find me AKA Mike B on all the different channels and everything. Thank you so much, Uncle Chat, for being here today. It was a very smooth episode. I like it. I like it when it's smooth. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> I just put, put put music here for a minute. Do 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 do. Man, I can't believe you guys didn't heard fucking uh vast touch, man. I'm pretty upset about that. <laughs>